your your chapter is called the British Invasion of Magnolia. Now there is something that's quite uh, provocative. So how does this title relate to Magnolia? You know, did the the British actually physically come here? Go ahead, Tab. I said the British did invade, but Paul Revere and the Raiders fought them off. <laughs> well, that was uh, that's part of it. Um, so they came they came to us in a bunch of different ways, but it was uh, through the air. Yeah. Right. It's through it's through the radio stations and Airways. KJR. Uh, KJR in 1964 had a yeah. monopoly on the on the airwaves, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they played because because the other big radio station had dropped out right after the World's Fair, KOL for AM for for the teen audience, and they didn't come back until 1965. So for a year, Pat O'Day and Pat O'Day and Associates and KJR. They had a monopoly on the Beatles and the Kinks and the Animals and all the all the bands that were coming over through the air and through the TV and uh, eventually through the movies, uh, through uh, uh, actual physical uh, appearances at the Seattle Center Coliseum that we saw being built. Uh -huh. um, so that was the that's where I started this and. Uh, then the reaction to it, uh, I've got here is Paul Revere and the Raiders was part of the uh, reaction that's a Northwest band. Sure. But I focus, I focus on a little Magnolia band that kind of got big for a year, uh, Tom Thumb and the Casuals. We're going to see them right uh, here. And uh, there they are. Uh, Tom Blessing uh, was in this picture. The other boys from Magnolia are Scott Letterman and Jim Wolf, but Tom Blessing on the left. He is, uh, although he looks older, he is 16 years old. He's the, he's the leader of this band at 16. He is a, um, a, just a sophomore in high school uh -huh. uh, at, at Queen Anne at the time of this. And I kind of follow the rise and demise of this band. It, it yeah. lasted about a year. And, uh, um, uh, but during Tom that was, time, they made a lot of music, but they might be called a one hit wonder. Right. Well, they 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 had a cup at this time. They were the Seafair Bolo recording artists. They, you're right. They had uh, they had like two, not really hits. They they had, uh, uh, although they were promoted by KJR. Um, yeah. They they were one of those bubbling under bands. Never well, never would, went. Would you like to hear uh, just a snippet of of uh, their biggest hit? Here we go. <laughs> Anybody that listens to that, if yeah. you're in the know, you can say that was a Northwest sound. What made it a Northwest sound when you say that? Well, it, it's funny. It was a heavy bass line. Um, a lot of them, uh, by this time, that song didn't start off with sax. And you didn't start it off right at the beginning, but Scott Letterman's drum, uh, drum entry into that really sets it off. They sound like the Sonics. They sound like, um, and you, you just hear that opening. Starts yeah. off with Jim Wolfe playing a, a, a little organ and then Scott Letterman just hits with a blistering drum that you go, wow, that's Northwest. <laughs> and, uh, and then of course, Tom comes in with the singing. And uh, you, you just know, uh, uh, people that collect it or know it, uh, that they say they are right in there uh, with that. It was, as you say, a very short-lived band, and there's some tragedy involved here. Well, sure, it's got the it's got the whole arc. The uh, um, about a year into it, and they they were looking. Um, they had replaced that the the gentleman in the middle. Uh, uh, that he was the lead guitarist. They had gone through. They had a knack for going through not drummers, but they went through lead guitarists. Oh, and boy. the uh, and the uh, they had their third lead guitarist within a year. But uh, by that time, uh, KOL, or actually Jerry, I, I think Jerry uh, uh, Denon of Jerry Denon Records and uh, in the KJR circuit, they found them a, a lead guitarist uh, uh, that had, had links to uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Uh, uh, Steve Valley was the uh, lead guitarist that they had at the end. Um, so they, they were on the cusp of, of going somewhere. 
And uh, unfortunately, they got in, there was a car accident in Eastern Washington where Tom and Larry Evans, the bass player on the right, were both killed. And uh, uh, that ended Tom, Tom and the Casuals right there. So. Wow. All the photos that we're showing, these are just a few samples of the more than 450 photos that are in the book. These are bumper stickers that were given to me by the uh, 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 Red, Red Hamilton Walker the first of uh, uh, KOL. When, when KOL jumped back in, and that's part of the story I tell too, is that the rivalry between those two big stations, KOL was not a minor player between 65 and 66. They were right in there. Yeah, and uh, uh, this these are bumper stickers that uh, if you'd like to put one on your car today, you could. So, <laughs> and uh, this the Tom Thumb Band wasn't the only one with magnolia roots. Here we have the no, Nobleman. These are the Nobleman. Uh, I think uh, 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 this was also referred to as Tom German's band, um, but uh, Cliff Pecknold is uh, uh, was Tom Blessing's uh, best friend. He's the lead guitarist It's right next to the sax player, which again also helped define the, uh, the Northwest sound was uh, a lot of saxophone was involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, I, I believe, you know, again, people need to realize that this is first person on your part. You were there you experienced a lot of this in your oh, youth and oh yeah so if i'm not saying you are but if you were to be in this photo where would you be <laughs> well i would be that little kid on the right that little head right there just watching the band but not not dancing with anybody because he's afraid of that <laughs> what talk, talk about what was so enjoyable and satisfying about writing this chapter of the book Oh, there's so many things. Well, you know what, the, the one thing, it gave me cachet to actually go back and try to find members of Tom Thumb and the Casuals. And I actually was able to hunt two, two of those guys down and I got great interviews and great, just talking to them about the joy of Northwest music with uh, Scott Letterman and Jim Wolf. I really had fun. It, 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 this allowed me to do that where Normally, those people would probably say, well, go away. Kind of yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a great bit of research you did, as well as just your own memoir itself. I mean, it really is a, is a chapter in this book that really sings. Everybody will enjoy it. And okay, thank, thank you, you so much. It's been, it's been great. Uh, Tab, you got anything yeah, more? Yeah, Brian, I mean, just the way you captured the whole ambiance, the atmosphere of the British invasion with kids having their own favorite groups and you know well, these are these are my groups these are yeah. somebody else's groups you know the the rivalry between K, kjr and kol that went down as far as the kids it was yeah. just just an amazing job thank you so much thank you Kyle.